So good morning, Mr. Ralf. Thank you very much for joining us today and giving us a little insight in your amazing business, which is one of Niagara on the lake's oldest family wineries. That is correct. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> how are you and how is your family doing? Well, first of all, we are doing well. We are healthy. So it is the most important thing in such times. You know, we do uh, practice social distancing, obviously. Uh, my wife, which her name is Eva as well, by the way, she has a bit of an immune system, so she doesn't go out of the house anyway. Mm. So at, at this time, at least, so I do all the shopping very carefully. And she concentrates, actually, she's in the garden and uh, does all, well, we just planted our salads and peppers and all those things. <laughs> wow. She enjoys it. It's the, it's the right region for that. <laughs> yeah. So we know everybody is affected by the pandemic privately yeah. and business-wise. How is, how is COVID-19 affecting your business? From all we hear, alcohol is generally a very sought after commodity these days, not only for disinfecting purposes. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, it, it is it's a challenging time for us. Let's put it this way. I mean, starting out, you know, this is uh, when everything came about, this is, oh my God, moment, you know, and uh, focus and face, and face a new reality. So we do have some challenges, obviously. I mean, here in Niger on the Lake or any other wine region in the world, we are focused on uh, tourism. So tourism is basically not existing at this time. So, uh, and uh, another big part of our business is the restaurant business. So we have about three, 400 uh, restaurants which we supply with wine. So they are all closed, which is uh, uh, obviously another kind of income source which went away. Export, we do a lot of export to China, Japan, also Germany, and there's nothing happening. So our revenue in the first uh, week or two weeks uh, dropped by about 80% which was quite quite a shock for us mm -hmm. and obviously you know we had to look first steps you know what we did in our company is look after employees uh, what can we do to uh, make sure everybody's fine from the health aspect but also from the financial uh, aspect so we found solutions uh, for all this and then we had to adopt the new uh, reality and we focused on online sales okay so it's working well. Is this a good idea? Actually, it's working very well. Actually, it's working better than we ever expected. Our online sales uh, actually are up about 50-fold at this time. Okay, so, wow. And actually, as, as a matter of t uh, today, we have a Friday, and some people want to have their wines before the weekend. I have right now three delivery trucks out, out there delivering wine. And after the interview, actually, I'm going to go in my car and going to deliver wine as well. Mm -hmm. okay. So we're going to have, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, all hands on board right now. We had to lay off some people, yeah, obviously, yeah. but every, everybody is uh, kind of uh, financially secure. So that's, that's, that's basically our daily life right now, going out, delivering wine and make sure everybody's safe. And what is your best selling wine at the moment then? Uh, I would say the Riesling, 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 Chardonnay, and Cabernet Sauvignon. Okay, so that's the, that's what people drink when they are at home and having cooked their own dinner then. Yeah, I guess, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's, it's doing, actually, we are, it's a nice part is, you know, we were able to stabilize the company. So in the beginning, you never know, okay, what's happening? Are we going to survive this uh, pandemic? Are we, what's going to happen? You know, how long is, is it going to take? Because without any uh, critical uh, changes in our business operation, I mean, we could have survived probably two or three months based on our cash flow and, uh, and money we have available. But with a new business model, even as we are right now, we could probably, I would say, a year, two years, we can survive easily at this time. So, but you did have to close your, your wine bar and, uh, and the adjacent uh, wine shop that you have on your estate? Actually, no, we are deemed an essential business. I mean, I didn't know that winemakers are essential, but now I'm kind of, you know, very proud of myself. But however, uh, we did, out of safety reasons, we did some changes in our operation. Uh, we do uh, cancel all tastings. So there's no tastings in our wine bar. People uh, can come in, they can purchase wine. So we offer curbside uh, pickup. Most people call, call in advance. And we have a separate area in the back of the building where people can pick up their wine, a curbside pickup. But uh, normally, I have to say, if we get two customers a day 
that's 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 a lot. I mean, regular customers, but yeah. we are open. But we, so again, social distancing, you know, physical distancing is very important. But most is online sales and uh, curbside pickup. Okay, and uh, assuming that uh, that um, that Ontario is going to open up businesses and general life in the rather near future, what what plans do you have for the year ahead? It's a good question because uh, a lot of unanswered questions we have at this time. Yes, we're going to open up sooner or later. I mean, every country is going to open up. And But how does a new reality look like? Are people willing to come out and be in a wine tasting bar? Are they taking the risk? Are people traveling again? Are they going to stay? We have actually on-site a bed and breakfast as well, which is close at this point, obviously. Are people are comfortable to stay overnight? And also, are we have are we comfortable to have people here? You have mm -hmm. to also remember, you know, it's not only <clears throat> the customers and visitors who come towards us, it's also us as humans and uh, our employees for safety reasons. So uh, we don't know exactly. I, I believe, again, it's a belief without uh, have proper knowledge that we are looking forward to uh, an online business towards the future, which is probably not as 50-fold as we experience right now but we're stabilizing at a, at a decent uh, amount. And we might even have to open a different department in our company for this one. And uh, the rest, you know, I think going to be a little bit sluggish and slower retail sales once restaurants open up, then we're going to see this one too. But that's our phase we are in right now. Uh, what is going to be next? We don't, we don't know exactly, you know. That is very true. Um, nobody knows really, so maybe I I, I ask you a, a little easier a question, which would be in, <laughs> in the shorter term. What are you yeah. for tonight? Do you have a, a, a series that you binge watch, or do you have a, a stack of good books, <clears throat> or do you just sit there and enjoy no. a nice bottle of wine? That is a very good question. Actually, I do not watch TV very much, and I try to stay away. And, but fortunately, I have actually a passion in my life, besides my wife, obviously. <laughs> um, and my passion is cars and motorbikes. Ah. So I always say, you know, every evening, you know, when I leave my office or I leave, uh, uh, I go into my barn and work on my motorbikes and work on my cars. In a, I don't know, when I was six weeks almost, I restored three motorbikes. So I bought some racks, you know, and uh, fixed them up. I painted them, make them workable, fixed carburetors and stuff like this. So I keep myself busy in this respect. But it's not only keeping busy. It's also good, I would say, for my mental health. And uh, that is an aspect, you know, we probably should look at as a society as well. It's the mental health of people, you know, when they are faced with the facts, you know, and have to be at home and can't do anything. So I'm, I, guess I keep myself busy with my, uh, with my hobbies and I hope a lot of people do the same thing and uh, to prevent actually health problems, mental health problems, which might be uh, coming forward, you know, right now and in the future. Yeah, I think very many people are thinking about that being confined to such close quarters. And actually, it's a very good hobby, I have to say, because cars and motorbikes are not contagious. <laughs> I know, they are, yeah, they're not contagious, and I always say, I self-quarantine myself in my barn, you know, <laughs> so, and, and I, 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 I quite, a, actually, I, I do enjoy it, you know, I really, truly enjoy it, you know, I'm sad, because I know me, in my normal life, I don't have this opportunity, because I'm, I'm doing wine tastings, and doing winemakers dinners, you know, I mean, social obligations, from going to weddings, to dances, to social events, nothing happening, so I can really, really enjoy my hobby and yeah from this respect actually I'm, I'm very happy at, at this time okay so thank you very much unfortunately this is already at the end of our interview I, I, you can please tell me a few words what you hope for um, for the world um, for the next I don't know we don't know how long this pandemic lasts but when it will finally be over what is the thing that you miss most about the time during the pandemic and what are you looking forward to most that you're missing now the most yeah, obviously, I, I do miss hanging out with friends and also with family because I mean, we, even with uh, our daughter, we do have social uh, distancing because she's working in the retail sector. So we can't really uh, uh, socialize with her. So uh, I'm looking forward to hugging my daughter, I'm looking forward to hugging my friends, you know, sitting together on the table, having a nice dinner, barbecue together. Obviously, that, that's, 
that's why I'm looking forward uh, uh, to it. Yeah, as in this, you know, I wish, you know, that this thing is coming to an end rather sooner than later. But uh, I just hope that uh, overall people don't get too careless once it gets a little bit better, because there's always a risk of a second phase, what, what could happen. I know now Germany is opening up some retail stores and I'm got to contact with my uh, family as well. And while they like it, but they're also concerned at the same time, uh, does it cause another wave? I hope not. And right now the numbers in Germany look very good, you know. Mm -hmm. If you look, you know, it's not just flattening the curve, you know, it's actually decreasing quite considerably. Here in Canada, we are flattening. And hopefully we get in the same stage like uh, we have in Germany right now, where it's actually decreasing. So I just basically I hope, you know, everybody is going to be healthy and safe and we don't lose too many lives. Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Good talking to you. Bye-bye.